Hey guys, what's going on? It's I touch stuff here that's spelled with a zero, and I'm bringing kind of a short video, or at least I hope it to be a pretty short video, and a follow-up to my previous Java tutorial um, for the iPhone where I showed you guys how to compile and run pretty simple um, Java code on your iPhone. And now I made a pretty big mistake in the last video um, where I had told a bunch of you guys, hey there, soldier stars, um, I had told a bunch of you guys that um, user input could not happen on the iPhone and um, actually it can uh, thank you very much to a user by the name of OSX 86 geek 101 I think that's his name um, annotation will be on the screen to his YouTube channel um, for pointing out that using system.in.read which is pretty much the most basic form of input in Java um, is a very much viable way to get user input on your iPhone um, and now, in the previous video, I had mentioned scanners, and the reason why scanners don't work is pretty much the library files behind it cannot be imported, and they're not supported um, on the mobile version of Java currently. So, um, using system.in.read and importing the IO exception class um, will allow you to do this, and I'll show you that in a quick second. But really quickly, um, before in my previous video, when I showed you guys how to get Java, I said to go to sections and scroll down to where it should say Java, and there should be eight files inside. Um, but for everyone, that's not the case because I forgot to point out that you need to have your city set to developer. To do this, go to manage on the bottom tab and then hit settings in the top left and just select developer most people will be on user um, or maybe on hacker but even hacker isn't enough hacker will only have I think one package um, from Java so to have all eight you need to click on developer hit done head back to sections and all eight of these little Java packages um, should be here for you to your convenience um, so I'm just gonna head into Dr. Java real quick to show you some code I wrote uh, about a year ago for a project in school and it was pretty much a simple um, binary to decimal decimal binary calculator I have some tests that were already open down there um, and you can find this code down below in the description I'll have a link probably from Mediafire to download it and it contains comments throughout the whole thing um, since that was required for my project so the only thing I did here is that in the original class um, it contained scanners to get user input and from what I know, uh, system.in.read does not read the same way as a scanner because a scanner is what's called a wrapper class. Um, it'll basically cast um, all of the bytes read from the next line into a string or an integer and then it'll, it'll let you save that or you can save that as a string and manipulate it as you please. So, um, since we can't use scanners, uh, we're going to be building our own wrapper class which is actually really simple um, and it uses system.in.read. Um, and the methods I have in this class are reader and reader int. Um, the names <laughs> can speak for themselves. This one just reads strings, and this one uh, is the same variation only with integers. And the way it works is you have a default string and a default character that you're going to be using, and it's going to loop. And every time it loops, it's going to save the next byte that it reads, and it's going to cast it to a character, and then save that character into C. And then, as long as that character is not equal to a new line, it's going to go ahead and add that character to a string which is this default string up here. Um, so that character is going to continuously add on to the end. Um, so if you have a line that looks like like uh, hello, it's going to go through first, and it's going to look at the first one. It's going to add H-E-L-L-O, and if there was a, an enter right here, um, it would stop the program and just return that hello string uh, right there. So that's pretty simple, and the integer variation works the same way. Um, the coding at the top is a little bit different because uh, integers or numbers don't usually have spaces between them. That's the only thing it adds um, into there. And then at the end, it'll create a new integer object from uh, the string with all of the trailing white space um, removed. That's what trim the trim method does. And then it's going to return the integer value, um, not the integer value, the int value of the integer object because um, we want to work with primitive data types and not objects. Um, so that's pretty much what I've written here and they can be utilized throughout any program and instead of using a scanner and the most important thing that you have to know about this is that if I were to remove this code right here and compile I would say unreported exception java.io.exception must be caught or declared to be thrown so um, what this means is that Java knows that uh, system.in.read can potentially throw an input output exception um, and to do this you either have to try and catch that exception or just let the program know that it throws one um, 
So uh, if you want to use a try and catch block, you can If you, in the case that you actually want to do something about it if it's thrown. But rarely does this ever happen. Um, so it's much easier to just write throws IO exception. But note, you need to have it um, in your main class and any other class um, that uses the reader or reader in classes. Um, otherwise, it won't work. And you see if I compile compilation completed, no errors there. And you also have to have um, the IO exception uh, class imported in order to use throws IO exception. So uh, if I just go ahead and run this, um, pretty much it'll pop up my calculator. Which operation would you like? Decimal to binary, binary decimal. The list goes on and on. Um, and from here, we can basically go ahead and enter an operation. I'm going to go ahead and choose, let's say, uh, decimal to hex and hit enter and we're gonna enter a decimal let's just do some random number I think that's five sevens and a two six um, and our answer is seven six a d b e and uh, I just have another window open here in Firefox so we can convert and just double check um, that my program actually does work hopefully it does uh, seven six a d b e so um it does work, and you can check the code um, by looking at it and reading it exactly what it does. Uh, and so that's the gist of this binary to decimal calculator, hexadecimal to binary, uh, so on and so forth. And we're going to go ahead and run it on the iPhone as a little demonstration um, for you guys. So let me just bring this up right here. So we're going to head into Terminal. Uh, I already have the class compiled just for time's sake, so we're just going to go ahead and navigate to the directory which it's stored in. So uh, it's also, again, in my documents, as I mostly save all of my Java files to. And we're just going to go ahead and run my calculator, making sure that all of the capitalization is correct. And I think it is. So we're going to hit return. And there we go. It pops up with my calculator. Which operation would you like? And the same list that went on in the Dr. Java console. And let's just uh, let's pick a different one. Let's do um, hex to binary and see how that checks out. Forgot the two. And just hit enter, and we can see that hexadecimal to binary pops up. Quick uh, side note right here I did write this code about a year ago, um, and it was just at the time I was first learning Java. Um, and so if you actually like put in a capital with hex to binary, it'll throw an error. Um, and I could fix that pretty easily just with um, an ignore uh, case method, um, but I'm just kind of lazy to fix this old code. Um, but that's just a quick side note, and we're going to go ahead here and enter in a hexadecimal number. So let's just do A12345 and hit return, and there is our answer in binary. Um, so that's a pretty long binary number, but we can go double check and see if it just looks similar. <laughs> How about that? Uh, A12345. Um, so we start off with 101 and end with 101 and have four zeros between there. I think that's enough uh, of proof that it, it works. 101, 101, and four zeros. And if you want to compare those two, just pause the video here and check that those two are the same. But I can assure you that it works. Um, the only case that it doesn't work if the number is too large, just because Java can't work um, with numbers of that uh, degree. So uh, I hope you learned something here. And I'm sorry in the last video I wasn't too well informed um, on exactly how you could get user input. And I pretty much uh, turned down the whole concept on the iPhone. But through the simple use of system.in.read and writing your own wrapper class, you can easily achieve this uh, overall goal um, and then have some pretty neat little apps running mobily on your iPhone. So if you ever need a hexadecimal calculator um, and you don't have internet access, well, just open up Mobile Terminal and uh, compile and run this app and you'll be good to go. So guys, this has been iTouch Stuff here. That's spelled with a zero. I recently purchased a brand new monitor. It's pretty sweet. Um, it's the Asus VN247, um, and I'll be doing an unboxing and review on that, hopefully within the next couple days, um, if not this weekend. Uh, and I will see you guys in future videos and tutorials. Take care.